Imagine you are playing a barbarian, a hunter or a sailor stranded on an island. You have to find food and you probably have to craft your own equipment. I have already covered hunting, foraging and crafting in other videos, but now I would like to talk about a related subject – butchering. How much meat do you get? How much leather? This may even be important in your typical dungeon expeditions. What if you have slain a dragon and want to use its hide for a new suit of armor? The main rules for butchering can be found in GURPS Low Tech Companion 3, on page 6. To butcher an animal you need one of two skills – survival or professional skill butcher. Survival works for game animals, and professional skill butcher works for all animals. Familiarity and equipment penalties are applied here. The process takes 1 hour per 100 pounds of body weight. The book says that edible meat is 40% of the body's weight plus 5% per point of success, to a maximum of 70%. It doesn't actually say what happens on a failed skill roll, but I assume that each point of margin of failure reduces the edible meat output by 5%. So you have to fail your roll pretty badly to get no edible meat at all. And I will remind you that a pound of meat counts as one meal. Or maybe the failure does not reduce the output, I don't know. But what about other parts? As per the same book, hides and skins can be used to produce three grades of leather. Armor weight leather with DR2 weighs half a pound per square foot. Heavy jacket leather with DR1 weighs quarter pound per square foot. Thin leather for tents and small leather items that does not provide DR weighs 1 or 2 ounces per square foot. All three kinds of leather cost the same, $3 per pound. Leather, however, is hide or skin processed with a professional skill tanner skill. Gerb Slota Companion 3 says that a butchered cow provides 3 to 4 square yards of leather. A pig provides one square yard of leather, a sheep or goat provides one to one and a half square yards of lightweight leather. Interestingly enough, nothing said about horse leather. But anyway, that's processed leather. What about the actual hides? If you butcher an animal in the wild, you are more concerned about the weight of the hide you have to carry, not about the square yardage of leather. The book doesn't even specify whether cow and pig leather is armor grade or heavy jacket grade. The stat blocks given in the book do not give these animals any DR at all, which is weird. I consulted a leather processing manual and found that a typical cow hide weighs 55 pounds, which results in 1.35 pounds per square foot. Since GURPS doesn't give DR to cattle, I have to turn to GURPS Animalia which gives them DR2 with tough skin. This seems to correspond to armor-grade leather. This seems to imply that leather is almost three times lighter than a non-processed hide. I am no tanner or leather worker, so I do not know how close to reality this is. Pigs, goats and sheep have DR1 in GURPS Animalia. I think this means that their skins, when tanned, become heavy jacket-grade leather. If we use the same skin to leather ratio, we will get something in the ballpark of 0.6 pounds per square foot. Also, I looked up online how much skin pigs have, and it's around 6% of their body weight. This seems to correlate well with cow height weight, since the weight for cattle listed in GURPS Lotte Company 3 is said to be around 1000 pounds. So, knowing that, we can make our own rules for leather butchering. And we can say that butchering an animal carcass produces 3% of its body weight in skin, plus half percent per point of success on your professional skill butcher roll, up to the maximum of 6%. What about bones and horns? They can be used for crafting too. GURPS Lotte Companion 3 says that bones, horns and shells cost $3.55 per pound. A research article that I found says that cattle have 60% of their body weight in bones, on average. If we combine the percentages listed earlier, 
we get 70% edible meat, 16% bones and 6% of skin. This leaves 8% of body weight for other stuff. Knowing this percentage, we can say that butchering an animal carcass produces 10% of its body weight in bone plus 1% per point of success on your professional skill butcher roll, up to the maximum of 16%. But that's actually not all the rules. In addition to butchering the carcass for meat, bone or skin, you may need other stuff. GURPS Dungeon Fantasy 2 Dungeons has rules for what it calls dead monster bits. You can extract poisons from venomous creatures with a poison's roll. You risk poisoning yourself on a critical failure and ruin the poison gland on a normal failure. Hazardous Materials Magical extracts any similar agents with weird magical powers. How much time does it take? How many doses do you extract? This is not given. Specific internal organs can be removed with surgery, with any failure spoiling the part. Thaumatology may be required to even know how to extract magically potent organs. Again, no times are given here, but they are given in GURPS Dungeon Fantasy VIII treasure tables. An attempt at harvesting potentially valuable organs takes 30 minutes. Rolls against surgery are at minus 1 for every multiple of its full hit points worth of damage the death monster took, and an additional minus 3 if it took any hits to the vitals. A success yields pounds of potential valuable body parts equal to the margin of success, doubled for each size modifier over 0 and halved for each size modifier under 0. So the GM may assume that undead have already spoiled or been stripped for parts. Finally, GURPS Dungeon Fantasy 19 Incantation Magic introduces a new skill, professional skill Dungeon Butcher. This one is used to extract the aforementioned mana organs that can be used as material components for incantation magic. I adapted this mechanic to gathering simple spell components from Pyramid 3 113. You can find the link in the description. I believe that's all there is in GURPS on this topic. Personally, I find it that such rules are necessary, even if they do not come up very often. A monster slain and left to rot doesn't linger in your memory for long, but if you slay a monster and craft armor from its hide, or at least sell its hide, you'll remember it. In one of my games, a goblin character made himself pants from cobalt leather after a successful raid on cobalt warrens. That's both gruesome, memorable and amusing at the same time. There is definitely room for expansion. How much chitin can you gather from a slain giant crab? Such things are unclear. Some body parts and rare materials can be used in place of expensive magical components, or even make enchanting or crafting certain magical items easier and more affordable. This by itself creates an incentive for adventurers to venture out into the wilds and procure said parts. I will definitely expand on this concept in the future, as GURPS already has a good portion of the groundwork done. So thank you for watching, I will see you next time.